Hello friends, welcome to our channel Piping Mantra. In this video, we are going to discuss about process flow diagram. You may also know this by different names like process flow chart, process flow sheet, block flow diagram, schematic flow diagram, macro flow chart. We are going to explain in detail topics like what is PFT, its symbols, elements, information available in PFT, and what to include or exclude in PFTs, steps to develop PFTs, examples of PFTs, and its application. So let's start. Uh, there are different types of drawings like process flow diagram. It shows what a process does. Then comes piping and instrumentation diagram PNID. It shows how it works. Next comes layout drawing, which shows how it looks. Then mechanical drawing and construction drawings. They both shows how to build it. Now, what is a process flow diagram? PFT is a graphic representation of a process system that shows the primary process flow path along with equipment, piping, control walls, and major instruments. A PFT is a type of flowchart that illustrates the relationships between major components at an industrial plant. It is most often used in chemical engineering and process engineering, though its concepts are sometimes applied to other processes as well. It is used to document a process, improve a process, or model a new one depending on its use and content. Also, PNIDs are developed based on process flow diagrams. Now, let's just go back and talk about its history first. This type of diagram has its roots in the 1920s. In 1921, industrial engineer and efficiency expert Frank Gilbert Sr. introduced the flow process chart to the American Society of Mechanical Engineers, that is ASME. Over the next several decades, the concept spread through the industrial engineering, manufacturing, and even business in the form of business process diagrams and information processing in the form of data flow diagrams and other chart types. For the process plans, generally the flow sheet is split into number of flow sheets to provide comprehensive data on different stages of the process. For example, number of flow sheets may be produced for following stages like raw material storage, reaction, separation, purification, byproduct recovery, effluent treatment, product storage, and utilities. In the process plant, it is often necessary to produce both process and utility flow sheets. In these cases, the process flow sheet should be divided by process stage as above, but it will probably be more convenient to split the utility flow sheets firstly by utility and secondly by plant area. Now, we will discuss about various symbols and elements of PFTs. A standard set of diagrams which shows the inter interconnection of process equipment and the instrumentation used to control the process. The most common PFT symbols in use today come from following agencies. You can find a comprehensive list of standardized symbols from our another video on PNIDs. More or less same symbols are used in PIDs and PFTs. These symbols are also labeled with words, letters, and numbers to further identify and specify the components that they are representing. Care should be taken in numbering and naming equipment items on flow sheets. These numbers and names will define equipment items throughout the life of the plant and must be unambiguous, brief, but descriptive. Numbers can be pure number or can be alphanumeric to classify the equipment item. Common classifying letters used are P for pump, T for atmospheric tank, PV for pressure vessel, C for column, H for heat exchanger, S for stirrer, F for furnace or fired heater, K for compressor, KOD for knockout drum. No attempt is made to show equipment items to scale in their correct elevations or in their current, correct relative locations to each other. Simple symbols are used to re represent different types of equipment items. The aim of the flow sheet is to exactly define the essential requirements of the process design and to represent an easily understandable picture of the process stages and controls. 
it does not always represent the physical locations and proximity of each component. Some of the standard symbols used in the PFTs are shown in the figure. The process lines are the lines where the process media actually flows through. They are represented by different types of lines as you can see on your screen, like normal pipe, thermally insulated pipe, jacketed pipe, cooled or heated pipe, and flexible pipe. Process lines are bolder than other lines such as those that represent electric, pneumatic or data signals. This is how we show a valve connected to a pipe. This is a typical two-way valve. Likewise, there are typically three-way, four-way valves are connected as shown on your screens. These are different valve symbols. Valve representation symbols vary project to project. So it is always advisable to refer the legend sheet right before starting to work on PNIDs for better understanding. The basic fundamental representation of the walls are shown on your screens right now. Now valve actuators are usually shown like this. We have different valve actuators like manually operated, pneumatic actuators, pneumatic actuators, rotary piston type, electrical actuators, and hydraulic actuators. Now let's see some graphical representation used to refer various equipments like pumps and compressors. You can see uh, on your screens various pumps and compressors, tanks, vessels, and drums. The picture on your screen shows different types of tank, vessels, and drums. Refer this picture for different type of heat exchangers, air coolers, heaters, etc. These are similar symbols used in PNID. So please watch out videos on PNIDs. You can see the link of it as suggestions on your screen. A typical PFT for a single unit process will include these elements. Major equipment includes names and ID numbers. Examples include compressors, mixers, vessels, pumps, boilers and coolers. Process piping moves the product, usually fluids, between equipment pieces. Process flow direction control valves and process critical valves. Major bypass and recirculation systems. Operational data such as pressure, temperature, density, mass flow rate, mass energy balance. Values often will include minimum, normal and maximum. Composition of fluids. Process stream names connection with other systems. Now as we have learnt about what to include in PFTs, now let's have a look on what to exclude in a PFT. Typically these more detailed items are omitted like equipment nozzle numbers, pipe classes and pipeline numbers, relief valves and safety valves, minor bypass valves, process control instruments, maintenance vents and drains, relief valves and safety valves, controllers like level control or flow control, flanges and class code. Now we use different types of PFTs depending on the level of details required. When the diagram needs to show multiple unit processes at a plant, it becomes more of an overview containing less detail. These are also called block flow diagrams or schematic flow diagrams. Each block can depict a single piece of equipment or a stage in a process. A symbol is usually used to show a piece of equipment and labels illustrate function. The process flow is usually shown from left to right line or right to left and arrows show flow direction. You can see the basic flow diagram on your screen. On the other hand, a PNID, a piping and instrumentation diagram is more technical describing mechanical details for piping designers, electrical engineers, instrument engineers and other technical experts who need this detail more than they need process details. PNIDs take the conceptual aspects of a PFT and add detail about the equipment process, sequence process and utility piping, bypass lines, instruments, valves, vents, trains and other items. Now let's discuss about the steps to develop the process flow diagrams. First, define the scope of your process to be studied and what you hope to gain. Second, decide on what level of detail is needed for your purposes. For a sophisticated process, different versions of the diagram may be drawn to communicate with people in different roles. Third, 
For an advanced process such as at an industrial plant, the research may be done through a project team, quality control group or a consultant. For a smaller, more basic process, you might do this yourself, perhaps even starting with sticky notes. Fourth, study the equipment, activities and relationships through observation and interviews. If you are modeling a brand new process, study whatever data is available including standards for whatever is being produced in the process. Fifth, draw a draft diagram and confirm it with people involved in the process. Make any, any necessary changes, additions or deletions in collaboration with them. Sixth, be consistent with your symbols to avoid confusion. Use symbols as we have shown in our earlier part of the video and always use project assigned symbols. Refer or prepare legend time to time as needed. Seventh, now the diagrams can be used for its intended purpose of documentation, quality assurance, improvement or whatever other goal there might be. Eighth, update your PFD as and when required based on information or requirement change. Now, let's look at some process flow diagram examples. The very first sheet should always be legend or symbol sheet or maybe number of sheets for legends. Here you can see a typical legend sheet. These are symbols for vessel, vertical, horizontal, with boot, tanks. These are symbols for different type of heat exchangers, heaters and flare, pump and compressor and different types of drivers also show any miscellaneous item. This is how we show flow, fluid direction of flow. Arrow with black color filled means it is coming from outside of the building or a unit and without color filled arrow depicts fluid coming from the same unit. Bidirection fluid are shown as per the symbol you can see on your screens. As we already discussed line type used for piping and electrical signals other items like steam traps, vent and scope brake should be shown like this. Different types of walls is shown as such. Rhombus is added to show stream number for streams like utilities, air, nitrogen, water stream etc. Process parameters like temperature, pressure and flow rate are shown with the help of these symbols. How to call out equipment is shown in this picture. And this table is used to tag out instruments like a variable stands for analysis, B is for flow rate, W is for weight, similarly D modifier is used for differential, letter I is for indicate and for output function control is shown by letter C. Kindly refer our PNID video along with this to have better understanding of symbols and instruments. Abbreviations are shown here like ASL stands for a safe location. At this place of drawing sheet, we show title block with project and drawing description. Here we show the revision table and purpose of drawing like issued for design or construction. Notes are typically shown here. Let's see one example of process flow sheet. On your screens, you can see the diesel storage flow diagram. Diesel is coming from outside with the help of trucks. Here you can see the truck hose connection and no, normally closed wall from tank to pump and filter to the emergency diesel generators of various location in the plant. Under this box you can see some equipment of diesel filing unit along with typical vendor provided piping. On top of drawing you can see the tag and description of the equipment used in this PFT. After all this question arises about its purpose and benefits. So let's see. A process flow diagram has multiple purposes like to document a process for better understanding, quality control and training of employees, to standardize a process for optimal efficiency and repeatability, to study a process for efficiency and improvement. It helps to identify unnecessary steps, bottlenecks and other inefficiencies, to model a better process or create a brand new process. To communicate and collaborate with documents that speak to various roles in the organization or outside of it. So that is it guys. This is all we can talk about PFDs for today. Please let us know what do you think about this video by liking, 
commenting on this video. Please subscribe to our channel so that give you such similar videos in future also. Thank you.